Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast brought to you by Strava Craft Coffee. Remember to use the promo code DNVR25. You'll get 25% off your entire purchase of that CBD infused, deliciously rich, and potentially life altering Strava Craft Coffee. I'm your host, Drew Creaseman. I'm the managing editor of DNVR Rockies. With me, as always, is beat writer Patrick Lyons. And on this episode, we're talking Colorado Rockies series win. Not quite sweep, but about as close as you're going to get to sweeping a team and not actually doing it over the Chicago Cubs, securing it today with a 6-5 to five victory. A uh, big win in the first game that we talked about a little bit already, the 13-6 to six game. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, maybe won the second ball game that was much closer, much more competitive, a really, really good ball game. End up going down three to two there after holding the two nothing lead for most of that one. Uh, then it coming down to that one play. We'll get into that a little bit. Uh, then this final game here, the rubber match uh, on an afternoon game. Patrick, the Rockies go out there and uh, stake themselves to an early four nothing lead. Senzatella was cooking, looked fantastic in his return, struck out six guys in a row at one point, which is not his thing. Uh, he's, he's very much a ground ball, you know, pitch to soft contact pitcher, can get the strikeout when he really needs to. But, you know, he was he was smooth sailing through the first four innings. But then uh, Cubs go out and make it a baseball game, and this one was really a, a nail biter right down to the final at bat, but as it turned out, Rocky's able to hold on six, five for the win and, and get that series victory and remain good at home. They have only lost nine baseball games. And I can't remember the end of Patrick Saunders tweeted it out yesterday. Uh, it was before they had lost. So it was eight at the time since the end of May at home. And that it was just, there they go. It's so I'll, I'll actually crack open by the way. Yeah. There you go. The Celebrate. Best. Enjoy. It was a great ball game. Very exciting, really very good. exciting Two ball game, and and one for the Rockies fans, which again they were able to get just about everything in this series. Today's game was fantastic with everybody in the lineup getting a hit. Garrett Hampson even breaking an zero for nineteen slump. The bullpen delivering, Chasin doing it uh, for two innings instead of just one, uh, where he's been so reliable to that? do that. I thought of you and said I was thinking of you the whole second inning. <laughs> He's like, "No, nah, don't don't push it." And they pushed it. They they it put did. the pedal to the metal on Chassine. He delivered. Bard got it done easily. A one two three inning with a little help on Ryan Altapia. There's there's a lot to to break down and and look into. But the Rockies have had, I think, even still now the best record at home since since one point in May, and yeah. they're continuing to do. We we sort of surmise, especially after the all-star break that their luck at home, if you consider it luck was going to kind of come back down to earth just a little bit. Naturally it would make right. sense. And their bad luck on the road sure. would kind of level out and they'd win more games. And well, they are still winning at home rather consistently. And now they're actually being a lot more competitive and they don't think they had a competition issue on the road. They had an issue of, getting those 27 outs yeah. and scoring enough runs. And they've been doing that a lot better uh, since the all-star break. So yeah. this, this this team overall in general has gotten a lot more complete outings from the entirety of the team. We know the starting pitching has been doing a lot of that heavy lifting, but they're getting the offense that they need when they need it. And they've been getting the bullpen uh, doing – some competitive things and <laughs> yeah. maybe sometimes no. making it close, making you yes. pull your hair out and Dang whatnot. But the bottom line is they've played really well, a lot better than before the all-star break. They're playing a lot better now since that break. Yeah. Uh, I got, so my, my routine lately these days is when I'm not at the ballpark and uh, I was in between going down today and, and had some stuff I wanted to work on on the written side, decided to stay home, get that done. So I'm watching most of the game with, uh, our pal Drew Goodman and and the excellent team there on the TV. But I usually, you know, to get ready for this live show, I'll flip over to the 850 KOA. I'll listen to Jack Corrigan uh, and Mike Rice on on that. And so I got this from Corrigan as he was finishing up. This is the 34th one-run baseball game that the Colorado Rockies have played in this season. Like you were talking about, you know, they were on the road. They had to have been over, you know, in those one-run games before this last road trip. And, uh, and so, 
yeah, it's like it's it, you, you don't necessarily know what it means. It might not mean anything for the long term. We were kind of chatting with a uh, uh, super producer, Kale, before we came on here, Tech Boy. And, uh, you know, it's just like it, there may ultimately not be a rhyme or reason. We may look back at this season and go, how truly and utterly bizarre was that? that they were so good at home, but it really didn't matter because they were so bad on the road. But uh, I'll be curious to watch that dynamic continue that you talked about. Like, will they go back to being terrible on the road because the thing has to balance out? Are they going to end up with this really strong finish to the season because of this? And that's going to do some things that maybe some people aren't going to like or or maybe not or whatever. Is it going to change the way they think about themselves? Um, or is it just going to be nice to watch some competitive baseball down the stretch? Who knows? But um at the very least for right now, it, it sure is fun, like you said, to watch these games and see some competitive back and forth guys going out there uh, trying to prove that they belong in the big leagues. And uh, some of them may be taking some big steps. We can get into some of that here in just a minute. Mark's digging on uh, Joe and Hilliard for sure. I mean, great combination. Great, great one, two from the right side, from the left side. Connor Joe, you know, with that third home run of uh, the season and of his career too. Like, let's not forget that. You know, he came into this season without any home runs. I think he's the fifth such player, Rockies player, uh, to have hit their first home run behind uh, Daza was the first, then Treo, then Brendan Rodgers. So maybe he's actually the fourth. So uh, I've been trying to investigate that to see. Uh, if if there's been other seasons that have had as many, I know 20, I think it was 2019. They also had four guys, uh, Fuentes, Hilliard, Nunez, and uh, I think maybe even Hampson, but Joe's been just absolutely wonderful. And, and again, you know, we, we've talked about some of the veteran guys on the team, Chris Owens, but more veteran guy that has been fantastic when he's healthy. Yeah. And then, and even, even when he's great, you go, yeah, but, what about the development of somebody else? Well, because he's been hurt so much, he really hasn't been, you know, taking yeah. up, up any starts. CJ Crone has been effective when being used, but he's not really starting every single day. In fact, with today's lineup, and I think they did this earlier uh, in the season where they kind of kind of rested the the older players. So Charlie was out of the lineup, Crone was out of the lineup, Adams was out of the lineup for a period of time, and even Elias Diaz, who's now thirty years old. So everyone in the lineup, right. including the starting pitcher was under 30 years old. So, you know, that's something promising to see from the Rockies and to get a victory out of that in, in a one run game where they're now 16 and 18 on the season, yeah. a record that if you are a contending club, you're very disappointed in because you, yeah. you got to win more of those one run ball games for, right. for a club in a transition season like this, 16 and 18 is a lot more competitive than you would you would yeah. think, especially with the trouble the bullpen. Yeah, I was gonna say with the bullpen being that terrible, I would yeah. have, I would have guessed it was so much worse than that. I honestly would have. Yeah. In two run games, though, they're up they're a lot worse. They're six and uh, fourteen. Yeah. There, but, yeah. but even still, in those one run games, like yeah, they are getting it done. The games have just been a lot closer than yeah. Than than you would imagine at, at right. times. And and in fact, they're they're uh, if you look at their expected win loss record, they're actually two wins beneath that. They should only be nine games under five hundred, based on their run differential, which yeah. uh, is is a is a bit confounding for this team that has seemingly struggled all year long. Right, yet have has still won games. I think it's just that, and and today's game was an example of how things can go right for the team the rest of the season, and maybe even next year and in 2023 if they can you know acquire uh, enough pop uh, on the offensive I side mean, this is definitely the image that flashes through their head when they're dreaming on some sort of yeah. quick turnaround right is rogers he's been great lately well i mean you're actually we can even start to get into because this this week's this series wraps version of 20th and blaze is exactly what if you would have told me before the year right when i was talking about the lost boys and all that thing. This was before the Nolan deal. And I thought maybe you still can build around that core. I'm, I'm, I don't have an answer to this question yet. I know a lot of people want to go the big long tear down, whatever, but this is the image that flashes at least in the heads of the people down there who think they can compete. And that's Rogers doing his thing. Hilliard contributing on some level Tapia being this grinded out player. Who's, you know, not going to help you on offense 
some on defense, a lot on the base paths when he can, though he did get thrown out stealing today. He's mostly been pretty good there this year. And some of these guys, like maybe Connor Joe's a thing, you know, and those are the types of things that when you when you get kind of a found player like that, that, that do change those projections because nobody was counting on Connor Joe and and maybe we shouldn't be yet like that's and that's fine like let's not get let's not do that yet let's enjoy Connor Joe <laughs> let's, but I was I was checking and I'm actually writing something right now for subscribers on uh the defense just the team-wide defense and there were a couple of spots where they were doing even a little bit better and I realized I talked about how great Toppy had been in left but then when I saw as a team the Rockies are actually number one in left and Toppy is like in third I was like Heck? Oh, Connor Joe hadn't even played a ton, but he's already contributed a defensive run saved out there. And he's already contributed a defensive run saved at first base. So if this dude's going to be an athlete who can plug and play and actually is going to have these great at bats and continue to do it like this is some fun stuff. So Connor Joe didn't quite make the 20th and blaze. But like I was saying earlier, if you looked at this and you said these are the guys who are playing really well for the Rockies late in the season and go good. Those are the guys they need to play well if they are going to build around this core and not tear the whole thing down. And I think to a degree, they don't even necessarily need that. What they do need is people to keep the seats warm so that it can create battles, right? With Michael Tolio finally is up in, in double A. And so you look at that next crop of guys who a majority of them are a lot farther away than Hartford. But there are a couple pieces that you can look and say, well, wait a minute, there could be a battle that's created, maybe not so much in 2022, but maybe in 2023. And, you know, as, as I was getting into this idea about the frustration levels, I think for Rockies fans this season with this team is that it's been one aspect um, over, over another of why they've been losing games, right? Maybe the starting pitching and the relieving has been good, but they're not getting it on offense where the offense and starting pitching has been great, but the bullpen hasn't. And so you say only nine games under 500 when looking at their run differential. A game like today, you say, well, it, it's not that hard. It's not that unrealistic to envision a, a team that can win ball games like this a little more consistently, win those close, you know, one run ball games and, and hang in there. And, and if you get some, some more supplemental pieces, or rather if you supplement what you already have, with maybe some bigger pieces, it remains to be seen how they're going to do that in the free agent market. They may need to dabble in trades. It, it, they're a lot closer potentially, right? Like you, you seem to think, hey, if things go right, maybe next year they could at least contend for a little bit. All right, they're probably not going to make the postseason. But what about twenty twenty three? It's not crazy, and it isn't. It isn't crazy. Um, I mean, that's but, what I've been at for a while. That's that's right. So and, and I appreciate that. <laughs> to your point, I'm exactly like, right. Man, yeah, I, to I, your I point, really it, it's not so. So, it's wow. not crazy to yeah. think that it can line up uh, like a day like today. Whether or not it will, whether or not they should try to hold on to that idea in two years from now, and what does that mean in three years? What does that mean in four I mean, years? Gotta, those are irrelevant. Flexible and all those right. Things. Th yeah, those things are kind of irrelevant looked at the 2015 Colorado Rockies roster and thought, yeah, these guys are, are two years away from going to back-to-back postseasons and coming up on their best season ever. But it doesn't always, that doesn't mean it's going to work out that way. I'm just saying that's why you've got to go, yeah, it's not impossible. Let's think about the ways it could work. And when you're imagining those things, you think about today's like the uh, days like uh, today, we, we will toast our Breck brews. I, I cracked it open earlier. I've got my, Juice Drop Hazy IPA Juicy. on this day. You can get your 15 can samplers of Breck Brew or Breck Seltzer at your local liquor store down at King Supers. Of course, you get a much larger one down at the DNVR bar if you're a member of the DNVR family, which you should do. You can subscribe today at the DNVR.com, get access to all that written content and get discounts constantly on hats and shirts whatever else is sticker packs. We got all kinds of things in the DMVR locker. You can also get access to our discord channel where you get to come and hang out with us chatting baseball 24 seven, all the other sports, whatever's on TV lately these days, it's going on in the Olympics, whatever is going on in your life. We're a big, happy family here and we're sharing it with each other all the time. Just one of the many, many reasons why you should become a member of the family today. Free shirt. 
Uh, Are we allowed to talk Gabriel. about the new merchandise? Has that officially been revealed? Or I, do we have to hold off about that. I I don't I don't know I don't know. I was actually we can say it exists. How about that? that? It's there on is... its way, and that's all we can kind of say at this point. Let me just say this: I I saw it, and I I have a I got a picture of it, and I showed it to my fiance, whose reaction to any of these things is normally like, "We don't need any more stuff, man." <laughs> we like look. And she saw it and she was like, we need two of those. <laughs> like, you need that. You like, you have to have that. <laughs> She's like, all right, uh, I'm going to get one of those. And I'm going to. So, yeah, you, you got to be a member of the family. You'll get discounts and all that kind of cool stuff. Also, uh, you'll get to know about a lot of our favorite sponsors, including our friends over at. Oh, no, I am on the wrong day <laughs> over at Solace Meds. Solace Meds located, they've got all kinds of fantastic locations. The one I know is just down the block from the DNVR bar. They've also got one in Port Collins, one in Wheat Ridge. They're absolutely awesome. Got all kinds of stuff for you, anything and everything you could possibly need. Uh, if you use the promo code DNVR20, you'll get 20% off. If you're down at the, oh, at any location now, any location That's they're great. doing the Solace Bar or King Cone. All right. Glad I double checked the read. Lindsay will be proud of me. <laughs> We're not saying how it used to be. Any location, you get 20% off and the free Solace Bar or King Cone. I'm going to have to try them now because I haven't been going on the Weed Ridge. That's fantastic. I'll have to let you know. So King Cone, Solace Bar, 20% off. Solace Meds, they got everything for you. Check them out online, S-O-L-A-C-E meds.com. Got to love them. All right. Let's do get into the 20th and blaze and, and talk about it because it's mostly filled with. Now, I will say fifth spot here was decided just before the end, uh, really in the middle of the baseball game. And you could have slotted a certain shortstop in there. We'll get to him later. Uh, it, it, it was between them and there for the last couple of starts, though, uh, had to go with the guy who we talked about a little bit in the last podcast. 215 ERA over his last eight starts. Kyle Freeland, yes, he keeps giving us our all heart attacks, little mini heart attacks every time he has to come out of a game because something's wrong. Uh, but he keeps making the next start and he keeps pitching well. It's one of the brighter signs. Again, if you're looking for the Rockies to be good in either 22 or 23, Freeland has to be an important part of that. He he can't be mediocre or bad. He's got to be at least pretty good. And for his last couple of games he's been very good so great stuff he's, to see yeah he's jumped back into the top of the rotation obviously marquez being the ace and john gray having this fantastic season um don't want to say renaissance but it's definitely it's been that consistency it, it's a culmination of a of a career of you know many ups and downs has been so much more consistent and freeland's been a part of that too as you said with the 2.15 era since I think June twenty second, and since June seventeenth, going back to you know his, his the start uh, preceding that or right after the Rocky starters overall have had a three point four one ERA, and that includes you know a couple wow. so sos by Chichi Gonzalez, and that's that's that three point four one ERA over the last nearly two months is fourth best in the majors and, and wow. third best in that's the National League. Raw yeah. ERA. That's just raw ERA and. We know just about half of those do take place at Coors Field where there's those dinks and there's those dunks and a lot harder to get strikeouts that, you know, Coors Field can suppress that. So Freeland's been, you know, at the, at the top of that list and they're, they're back to having that nasty three headed monster once again. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much fun when those guys are at their best. And, and obviously you hope that whatever that last thing was for Gomber is a blip in the radar and they really do cement themselves in these final couple of months here is those are the four guys, the rock. And we'll see with Sensatella. Like, I mean, it's, it's going to be fascinating. Do, do, you know, it doesn't look like Rollison's going to have a, a shot to pitch the big leagues this year. We'll see if he gets back out there at all. Peter Lambert, you know, just came out recently and said it. It is his. It's still his goal. We'll see. I mean, we also we all love to set some goals, right? Uh, but uh, that you know, usually players talk to the team and there's conversations about those types of things, which makes me think it's at least potentially in the cards that we see some Peter Lambert this year. And and so you want to feel 
both good and much more knowledgeable about where those guys are going to be at. Because again, that's the absolute linchpin in the whole thing. They, they can't, the, this group of starting pitchers can't just be, yeah, they're pretty good. They have to be great if the Rockies are going to try to pull off this trick. And they have the chance to be. It all has to start right there, though. None of, none of the rest of it matters. You nail every free agent pick, totally revitalize that bullpen. And if the starting pitching isn't what we think they can be, it doesn't matter. No, they've, they've got to do it. Goody uh, talked about it on his podcast briefly that uh, with Corey Sullivan, that that's it, that this this franchise going forward has to be built around starting pitching yeah. and defense. Yeah. All right, at number four on 20th and Blaze Street, we got the man who secured the game <laughs> with a great grab, the 27th out, Rymel Tapia. Couldn't get the ball out of the infield today, but it didn't matter because he just <laughs> – has been so consistent, still got himself two hits, scored a run. That's just today. What he's done in the past week plus has been even better. Batting 291, 734, OPS. He's solidified that leadoff spot and has just been so incredibly undervalued in a sport right now that I think people are clamoring for the ball to get put in play. And he does it you know, better than most. Uh, that's not an understatement, but uh, he just puts the ball in play and things can happen when you do that. He's big enough. He's strong enough to do that. If it singles every time, that's fine because he will steal a base and that's a top of a double. And he even, we saw right. it during the series, he'll hit some real uh, garden variety, mom and pop, Regular old doubles. He's capable of that too. Ryan Altapia, number fourth on 20th and Blaze Street this week. Yeah, man, it's uh, you love to see it over his last 48 games, batting 328, 376, 34 with the slugging percentage, 18 ribbies, uh, 20 doubles. No, he hasn't hit any home runs in quite some time. He's only struck out 28 times. Uh, threw a few stats out there on the Twitter today. Ryan Altapia hasn't recorded a hat trick or struck out three times in a game in, in a game since September of 2019, early September. So we went that whole month, couple of games in October, all of the shortened 2020 campaign. And so far all of 2021 without striking out three times in a game, as we've talked about before, he's never struck out four times in a game at any level. And well, no, we, no, he did. I think he did once or twice at a level. But oh, not in the majors. Oh, not in the oh majors. that's right. That's right. It was, and it was in minor league. Double A, maybe after he it might had have been once in Albuquerque. Yeah, his, uh, his debut. It was actually, yeah, in that weird period of time where he. We ultimately need to play. just trademark the tap trick, where typically mm. a hat trick is three goals. If you strike out three times a game, that's a tap trick for the other team for the to other get credit team, yeah. because Ryan Maltapia, if he strikes out twice in a game, right. that's pretty wild. But three times. Right. It's just not going to happen, and but, that that's been a rarity at the major league level. Never happened in the bigs yeah. in his now five plus parts of five seasons in the major leagues. That's a rarity, man. That's a rarity. But as I wrote about this week, the real revelation really is because look, this is always who he's been. It was always who he was going to be if he was allowed to be himself. This is what you're going to get. Uh, it, it's great. He's going to hit around 300, maybe a little under, maybe a little over. Hopefully, he can find a way to make it more of a 310, 315 thing. But still, it's the defense and, and the base running that have really come around. We saw it in this series. You, you talked about securing the series, that final game with a great diving catch. And really almost, and, and what is this, the fourth or fifth time now this year that Ryan Maltapia is almost. So he's among the lead leaders in DRS in left field without making these like four or five catches where he keeps leaping up and then the ball goes into his glove and then he crashes into the wall and it pops out. You've got to think he'd have a, a sturdy lead in all of those categories if he just secured a few more of those. But it was rough to see that that was the the big scoring play for the Cubs in game two, that, that it was in the glove and out. And there was even a slight stumble before he let go of it, which your brain wanted to hold on to as an actual catch for a minute. But it just... Uh, yeah, he's he's shown you an ability to to be an impact player everywhere, and that was something that even I was never sure. Like, 
those parts of his game were, were going to come around. I was always so enamored with the contact skill that I didn't care as much, <laughs> but that that's really come around. I'm like, let's go, man. That's fun. It's been really solid. Yeah, zero tap tricks yeah. for Ryan Maltapi this year. He has not struck out three times in a game yeah. the entire season so yeah. far. Or zero tap tricks. Zero this year, zero last year. Amazing. It's been impressive. In this era, with dudes out there throwing like 93 mile an hour sliders and shit, too. Like, like in this economy? In this economy? <laughs> Number three, speaking of hat tricks, Brendan Rogers, B Rod. Only at number three, which begs the question, gosh, who's who could be hotter than him right now? He's got himself, I think he's up to 11 games on the hit streak. He's been incredibly electric. The the power has been there. Even on the road, he's going opposite field. He's going over the center field fence by hook or by crook. Brendan Rodgers is definitively I, – I, I, I don't want to make it too early and, and say he is their next superstar. And, again, it might not be superstar in the same vein as the Tulowitzki, the Arenado, these guys that in their prime they had Hall of Fame-type seasons. Right, it's kind of like how every team has an ace, but that pitcher is not a true ace. I think we'll see if he becomes a true superstar, but he will be the Rocky superstar. I think he's in many ways already surpassed it's, Ryan McMahon in in, in some ways, yeah. and I I think it, he might be the safer bet for next year to have that big season because we've been waiting for Ryan Mac to do it for a little while now, and he hasn't been able to you know, totally put it together. He's kind of done it step by step, similar to Ryan Maltapia. And I think Brendan Rogers now finally healthy, finally up in the bigs, has been able to show what he can do. And it really seems like if he stays healthy, the sky is truly the limit. Yeah, I, I've got to agree with you there. And as everyone knows, I've been the biggest Ryan McMahon proponent since he was a teenager, uh, you know, and, and there's still – an athletic ceiling for Ryan McMahon. And if you're a, yep. a nerd like me about defense, there's that part of you that just goes, I went and double checked today. Ryan Max did a 3.4 war this season on baseball reference. Like he's having a very, very good year, despite the fact that it feels like he's kind of having a disappointing year. Uh, I think if he can get a nomination and he probably won't because he's just been too split between second and third, if he could get a nomination and, and be I in, be a finalist be, for the gold glove, I think that would actually do so much for, obviously it does a lot for his career, just, just being mentioned in that. But right. I think that would be almost like, that would be just a big step yeah. for his stardom. And you I, go, well, how, why would that impact, you know, him at the plate? These things have a way of, of going about that, of, of people kind of recognizing the talent, the potential. It's like, hey, look, it's all coming together. And you go, yeah, but that's on the defensive side. That's totally different when we think about superstardom and whatnot. It's usually always offense. It's usually always home runs. It's those kind of things. But I think if you can elevate him up on in the defensive spectrum, I think that elevates him overall. And you start to maybe see an impact offensively next year and, and we're gonna keep an eye on that because as you know you keep you keep banging the drum for that like brian mcmahon is doing some impressive things over there at the hot corner it it's been really tremendous and and i was looking at the numbers and tweeting out about it during the second game from the press box and I, it was like he made some incredible play in the first inning and i just had been looking at all the numbers and i go i double checked all the stuff i go yeah he's he's got 17 combined Defensive run saved between he's basically been the second best defender in baseball at third base and the second best defender in baseball at second base, <laughs> which is kind of mind blowing, but he's going to play the rest of the season primarily at third. Yeah. And, and so, so combined he's at 17, Jacob Stallings catcher for the Pittsburgh pirates. Is he's at been 15. otherworldly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> insane. And then there's, there's more of a drop off. Like those guys really have been the best defenders and, and it's difficult because McMahon has played the two different positions, as you point out. But then I, you know, I send that out and he made three, like, you know, his star in your scorecard plays after I sent out the tweet about how he's been the best defender in baseball. So I think if guys keep hitting the ball, his direction his because remember now they use those defensive stats 
in deciding who gets nominated for Gold Glove. They don't just eyeball it the way they used to when when you and I were kids. And so, uh, you know, they're if his DRS is really and truly that high above and he keeps racking up in that stat, he may just get the nomination. I agree that I think that'd be a big thing for him, his confidence, his future. Uh, like you said, even oddly enough for his bat to come around and maybe because you go like, oh, okay, maybe my defense is automatic. You don't ever stop taking ground balls, but you, you kind of go oh, next year, you know, this off season, I'm going to focus everything in on fixing everything that's wrong with my swing. And he's such a cerebral player. Are we supposed to be talking about Brendan Rodgers right now? Whatever. You guys watch the baseball. <laughs> we it's are. Like, he's a 12 game hit streak. Brendan Rodgers has been fantastic. <laughs> I, 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 we're on the topic of Ryan McMahon. I, I've got to ask it. I, I have an answer. I think you're going to have the same take on it as I do. Does it help or hurt Ryan McMahon when we think about becoming a finalist for the Rawlings Gold Glove at third base? Does it help or hurt him that he's on the Rockies, particularly because of that Nolan Arenado. Not just he's on the Rockies. It, th that doesn't mean anything to any voter or, or any of the, the well, committees that go into it. Do you think it helps or good. hurt him yeah. that he is following in the footsteps of Nolan Arenado? I actually think it could help him. Same. I, I, I do too. It's one of the very rare too. times, I think, where a guy just happening to be on the Rockies – because it makes for the better story, right? It's 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 a That's more right. interesting That's right. uh, matchup. It it is super fascinating. That um, now here's another thing that I looked at, by the way, to double check this. I don't want to ruin my story too much, uh, because Ryan McMahon is way way ahead of Nolan Arenado this year, and the Colorado Rockies with. McMahon and Fuentes together are way out ahead of everybody. In fact, they have more DRS at third base than any other team has at any other position. But they are not on pace to do what Nolan Arenado used to do regularly all the time in his sleep. <laughs> so, you know, uh, they would have this this crew would have been second in a lot of other years, but you go back and look at what Nolan did in terms of DRS in some of these years, you're like, oh, there's a reason he kept getting winning the platinum glove, huh? So they're better than Nolan now. Are they better than Nolan then? No, still no. Nolan invented, he's he's back to doing it again, by the way. He's racked up like four DRS in the last month, has Nolan Arenado, but he's reinvented the position. You can't, <laughs> not everyone can just do that, but. Here's the bow on the Brendan Rodgers side so we can get to the last two guys here. To, to just Because we said all that about McMahon, I agree with your point that Rodgers does look like the more likely superstar right now. He's the one. That's that's the one you need to have on your wish list. Holidays are going to be here yeah. before you know it. Already put it down. He's the guy so you would have picked up in your that. keeper fantasy league. Right, right. Like that's the guy you want. That's the one. Yep that that needs to be the top one on your list. Just just like Cubs fans right now, how they're scrounging around, going, "All right, well, I can't wear any of these Cubs uniforms anymore." Right. Uh, yeah. Rockies fans, you know, might be dealing with that. Yeah, they dealt with it with Arenado. They yep. dealt with it. They're going to deal with it most likely with Trevor Story. John Gray doesn't have a huge jersey following with Rockies fans. You don't really see too much of that more. Kyle Freeland, you're slowly starting to see more Herman Marquez, but I think the next one we're going to start to see a lot more of is the number seven, Brendan Rodgers. Absolutely. Number two in our 20th and Blaze Street is going to be Mr. Elias Diaz, catcher of the present. Is he the catcher <laughs> of the future? Yes. We'll see. You know, but catchers catcher of the present for sure, boy. Yeah, I mean, catchers too. Like they have a, a much longer shelf life than life than you realize. They takes so long to develop. You know, that's that was one of the reasons why I was you know mildly sour on the Drew Romo selection, just because it can take so long to get the best out of a catcher because it's not just about going up there and hit and learning defensively. It's handling the pitching staff. It's so many things. And Elias Diaz had a couple really good seasons with the Pirates. And you go, all right, this guy could be something. Had a down year at the wrong time when he was, you know, getting to arbitration and was going to be a little bit costly for, you know, cash strapped club like the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Rockies swooped in, picked him up. And now you're starting to see him develop, you know, after a, a very 
rough, you know, first couple months of the season. We've already gone through that, but man, he's just been, he's been fantastic. He's been exciting. You almost want to watch every one of his at bats because you go, all right, is he gonna, is he gonna hit another home run? He's, he's on pace for a lot more this year. I'll, I'll put it like that. <laughs> Yeah, I had a very strange feeling in the press box in game two of this series, Patrick. And I can't remember the exact circumstances. And he didn't end up coming through. But it was, I can't remember if the guy in front of him took a walk, got the base hit. And and I think it was there in that first inning. They had already scored the first couple of runs, right? Tapia leadoff double, Rogers double, fantastic. Story brought in another one on a ground ball to short. Uh, And then I think somebody walked to keep the inning going for Elias Diaz, you know, batting down there maybe in the seventh spot. And it was this like, oh, he could do something here. He could really blow this game up. And it's just not how you felt about the Rockies seven and eight hitters. And when you look down there and you see Diaz Hillier, you go, oh man, this could actually get really cool and fun and interesting. I'm, I'm actually excited to watch these guys hit, knowing full well that they've still had plenty of struggles. They might strike out here and it's still baseball. The odds are against the hitter, but you're actually excited these days to watch the Rockies seven and eight hitters. And that that's truly been something wild. That's one of the dynamics that Elias Diaz has brought to the team that I've appreciated the most is that you're not just kind of you know, once they're past the middle of the order, they're just kind of going and I'll, I'll go and make some soup. I'll go and heat up some dinner. You know, now's the time to make a little tea. Not a big tea guy, whatever you get. Heat up my Strava craft coffee again, crack open another Breck brew because they're down at the bottom part of the order where it's going to go light hitting infielder catcher who can't hit worth a damn and then the pitcher. So I'm not watching this inning. Right. And you can't right now you, you can't do that. That's kind of amazing. <laughs> Yeah, the, the tandem that the Rockies have right now has hit a combined 18 home runs. Mm. That's a lot. It, it's actually tied for 11th, and with one more, they can tie for 10th on the season. Wow. And really, you, you hit three more, and you could be up uh, up near sixth, where the White Sox have Yasmani Grandal. And you go, they paid a lot of money for him, and how much are the Rockies paying? You know, they're, they're catching tandem? Hmm, right. not, not very much, so... They're they're amongst the league leaders. They're they're right there in, in the middle of the pack, really. Um, but but towards that that upper uh, third, if you will. And so, man, Elias Diaz has been been a huge part of that, and it's been very very refreshing. Yeah, been absolutely fantastic to watch. I'll tell you who else is absolutely fantastic. That's our friends over at Chevalier, Mike and Virginia, the protectors of the realm, helping you get through what can be a very stressful time trying to buy or sell a house. This market has been absolutely wild. You know what I'm talking about if you've been out there as a part of it. Let Mike and Virginia Chevalier take the burden off of this extremely difficult process. They will alleviate so much stress and take all of that worry off of your plate. They got a great fun perk for DNVR listeners. When you visit them at dnvrmortgage.com, enter to win a free DNVR shirt or hat of your choice when you do. Most importantly, get set up with a free consultation to discuss all of your options. That's dnvrmortgage.com. Or you can call Virginia directly at 303-257-6578 or Mike at 970-412-2472. Michael Chevalier, NMLS number 1931006 and Virginia Chevalier, NMLS number 1910631. And I'll tell you what, we're about to Talk about somebody who did a little manscaping of a baseball. That's right. I said it. You want to get a close shave. You got to get manscaped. And you, you really do, fellas. It's the time. It's it's well past time if you've never done it before. Take care of yourself so that you are taken care of. It's one of the best pieces of advice I can offer anybody out there. Get taken care of and take care of yourself. When you get that lawnmower 4.0 package, they get you all kinds of cool stuff trim you up, spritz you up, get the smell goods, get some really, really comfortable pair of boxers. Yep, got them on right now. Just had to double check. Most comfortable pair of boxers you're going to find anywhere in life, I promise you. So go to manscaped.com, use promo code DNVR, you'll get 20% off plus free shipping. Again, that's manscaped.com and use promo code DNVR to get 20% off plus free shipping. All right, Patrick, who's been manscaping baseballs lately? 
That would have to be our number one on uh, 20th and Blaze Street, Sam Hilliard, a gentleman that right after the All-Star break was in AAA, or rather during the All-Star break was right. in AAA, and you thought, well, he's not going to get the opportunity. Maybe he hasn't earned it. Maybe not. Regardless. You could easily argue. He got the opportunity, and he has made the absolute – most of it has been launching baseballs. He's cut down on his strikeouts a little bit. And even when he has been striking out, you go, all right, that's that's fine. That's a, that's still a trade I'd be willing to make if he can still keep launching them over the barrier, keep giving out souvenirs to fans at Coors Field and, and on the road too, as, as we saw last week. He is our number one on the 20th and Blaze top five list of the Rockies of the last week. Yeah, they said that ball today went 464 feet. And that's only because the damn building got in the way. That ball was still going. That was one. Now, and I checked it. It said it was 110.4. I was expecting to see 117, you know, something like that. I thought when I saw it, I thought that's one of the hardest balls I've seen hit this year. Uh, we've seen Kroner hit a couple of that have actually been harder. But it just – the second he hit it, you went, well, that's gone. Like that was, I don't know, that was as no doubt or as a no doubt as you're going to get. Um, yeah, he's been playing great defense lately. Almost legged out an infield base hit the other day when they were shifting him. That'll be something that, again, cutting down on the strikeouts is going to be massive for him because he does have that elite speed. And it, it, it's a tough, you know, combination because he shouldn't go up there trying to do what Rymal Tapia is trying to do with the plate. Not when you can hit the ball 464 feet. That's a better outcome. No one's no one's arguing that, right? It it's just there are those times we saw it in this series. Uh, he did hit one. He had a, a big RBI hit on a double the other way when they were shifting him. Took the ball, you know, shot it down the third baseline. And and if he can add that to his game, to some extent, this is what you were talking about. Yesterday, Patrick, and and I agree, or last pocket winner, I think, uh, <laughs> it was, you know, it's time to go all in on Hilliard. And it looks like uh, the Rockies are at least going to ride it out as long as he's playing well. And you hope if he does hit a short slump or whatever, that they maybe just continue to stick with him. Because like you said, the ceiling is so high there. You got to feel, you got to feel excited about watching this young man play baseball right now. Over his last 15 games, he's got five homers, 10 RBI. Over his last seven, so basically in the last week, three home runs, including that one today. Strikeouts have been, again, has been down. Eight uh, of his last 21 at-bats were strikeouts, which, again, is a lot higher than you would like. But when you're getting the home runs, when you're getting that pop, especially down at the bottom of the lineup, you can deal with that. And we know mm -hmm. he's got – you know, that, that above average potential out there in center field, he has a plus plus arm, you know, you might as well keep running him out there. And yeah, mm -hmm. you know, to a degree you say, ah, it's not fair to, to Jonathan Daza. Look, he, he was on the IL. He's got to figure out his way back into the lineup. That's, there are just those things. It, it wasn't fair that Troy Tulowitzki here, second reference of the pod, right. uh, after probably having not mentioned him in, in a couple of weeks, it wasn't fair that his body just kind of broke down on him a little bit, right. and he never really got to to finish out, you know, the a latter half of his career. That maybe you know, had he been a little bit healthier, could have been enough where you make a Hall of Fame case. Maybe it, had it been enough for him to just continue to play and just kind of rack up more numbers. You could look and say, well, you know, he, he got, at least got over the 2,000 hit mark and uh, various other little numbers here and there. Bottom line is life is not fair. Uh, but right now, life has definitely have been a lot more fair for Sam Hilliard and, and all the work that he did down in, in Albuquerque with uh, Warren Schaefer is, is really paying off. And yeah. you love to see it because there really are few better stories in baseball yeah. than Sam Hilliard and, and his entire family. Really, that that there's Sam Hilliard and Connor Joe are, are in, like sharing the same like magical space together is is kind of amazing and and seeing the energy that they're bringing and uh, yeah, um, Joe Joe really is too. They're they're both such this like bursts of joy whenever something happens. So uh, very excited about all of that. Also, 
Very excited to watch uh, a good version of the next player that we've got to talk about. Our draft king of the game. And that is, of course, Trevor's story. Finally breaks through with a big one. A vintage Trevor Story performance. Two home run game, three ribbies. Really, you know, is the, the draws first blood with the solo shot and answers back with the game winner. Uh, after the Cubs make their rally, you know, he hits the two-run shot that puts the Rockies up ultimately to win the baseball game. So he begins the offense, he ends the offense. And, uh, you know, he's been certainly better uh, as of late. Uh, he, he had another, uh, he had uh, several hits in the first game of the set. But, you know, you, you we're still waiting for the big week, you know, hopefully the big month for Trevor Story. Boy, does he need it because there's no guarantee he's going to get the big contract or even be able to get the big one year thing like the Marcus Simeon deal if he doesn't turn it around right quick. But if today was any indication, uh, and really he has been swinging it better lately and everyone is rooting for Trevor's story to put it together and, and finish well and, you know, put whatever, whatever struggles he's dealing with. And, and all of us would understand those, you know, behind him and get out there and play his game. Cause he's just so much fun to watch play baseball when he's good at it. And it, it was nice to see today. I thought it was very interesting that his two home run game comes exactly a week from the eve of the MLB trade deadline when he, you know, and you heard it in his comments where he seemed really displeased. It, it was interesting that, and I, I don't think we've really discussed that that much, but when the comments first came out by Nick Roke at the athletic, it seemed like Trevor story was frustrated with the organization and thought that he should have been traded. And in the, you know, days after and, and kind of maybe reading a little bit more of his quotes, you realize that he was just frustrated in what he thought was this thing that was going to be inevitable happening, happening, and it and it wasn't going to happen. And so it was almost like he went through this whole thing for nothing, but it wasn't wasn't necessarily guaranteed. Right. And so I think he just man, it, it's it's hard. It's hard to go through something like this. And you know, I, I don't I don't know the last time the Rockies really even had a guy that had to go through this, as we discussed, 2012. With Marco Scudero, that was the last time there was a guy that it seemed he was inevitable that he was going to get traded. And there's probably been other guys on the Rockies who've felt like, all right, you know, CJ Chrome, I'm sure for the past week is waiting or yeah. the past month had been waiting for it. And so that took a toll on him. And, you know, since then, even in his past seven games, he's got three home runs, uh, hit batting 333, seven RBI, only yeah. struck out five times. And so he's refreshed, he's recharged. We'll see what he's able to do on the defensive side. That's kind of been an area uh, of, of some concern and some and that question. weird play in game two where he just airmailed. He made a stupendous stop and then just on the throw. It was weird. But, yeah. But the offensive side is coming along it today. Really and you go, too. all right, cool. He's a week out from it. I know where I'm going to be You know, next week. I know where I'm going to be the week after that. I've got a calendar. I've got a schedule. I don't have to worry about moving and learning new teammates' names, all of that stuff that – might go in with just this unknown. Now it's known. And now he can just kind of go back to doing what he does best and right. playing baseball. And you saw it today with him putting the team on his back in many ways. And that's that's why he's our DraftKings Sportsbook king of the game for that two home run performance, the yeah. 17th of his career. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh it was really fun to watch and and to see him hit home runs both ways, right? Reminding you that he just has ridiculous all fields. athletic power, man. And he really is. I'll tell you what, Patrick, it was absolutely Brendan Rogers esque. Uh, it, Can't it, dispute that. Can't dispute that. Middle infielders can, they can hit some home runs that, that will be, uh, you know, we, we talk about various points in a game and various points in a season where you, you reset the score and it's like, okay. And now it's zero, zero even though the scoreboard might say it's 11 to one, right. it's zero, zero from here zero. forward. <laughs> yeah, right? right. And ball players have to do that. I think, in, I think in all sports, you got to do that to stay in the game say, Hey, I, I got to work on my development. I got to show the coach some things here and there. It'll be interesting to possibly look and fudge the fudge, the dates to fudge the numbers and say, what middle infield tandem hits the most home runs from 
point X to the end of the season. Probably the beginning of June is really when Rogers started taking off. So, uh, well, but if, but story wasn't right. So maybe we've got to do August. Maybe the All Star break. Maybe it could yeah. even just be the All Star break. Yeah. Second baseman, been, shortstop. Yeah. Who will hit the most home runs? You gotta like the Rockies pair yeah. to be towards the top of the list at least. And we'll see what happens when Frankie Lindor comes back. If maybe Baez and Lindor start doing it for the Mets, who are still really struggling and uh will be interesting right. to see if the yankees end up getting in the postseason and the mets don't but story and b-rod even if it's only for the next two months together doing it that's that's exciting so as we mentioned trevor story is of course our draft king of the game and speaking of draft kings it's the best sports book you're gonna find anywhere i have so much fun on that thing it makes watching sports a lot more fun taking overs and unders in baseball on things like strikeouts or who's going to get a hit, who's going to hit a home run, how many total runs are going to be. I've, I got to step away from the runs. I've got to step away, away from the overs and unders <laughs> on runs lately. They, these, these games are the, and I go, okay, everyone for sure take the under and it's a 13 to six game. And I go, okay, I keep getting burned on these overs I'm, or unders. I'm finally going to take the over three to two get get out of here with this so uh, I'm, I'm off of overs and unders right now but either way it's so much fun it's a game within the game uh if sports don't get your adrenaline up just enough all by themselves do hop on the DraftKings app right now uh you can win some free money right away basically this is the easiest way to get a free hundred dollars in credits to bet on whatever you want kind of test out what you think might be fun for yourself right now. There's literally, I know people say this and ads like there's never been a better time to get it, but they're like, literally, this is, this is the absolute best time. If you want to get in on one of these entry promos that I've ever seen, it's a guaranteed hundred dollars in free credits. Use the promo code DNVR when you sign up, you'll turn $1 into a hundred dollars in free credits. If America wins a medal. Huh? That's it. <laughs> Which they will. That's code DNVR to turn $1 into $100 in free credits for a limited time only. DraftKings Sportsbook must be 21 or older. Colorado only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. All right, Patrick. So Rockies beat what was left of the Cubs. Again, very clear. Tapia hangs on to that ball for, I think, Half of a second. I don't even think you need an entire another full second. Half of a second longer, that's a catch. And then you've swept them. But whatever. All right, fine. No, was, you, you take them. Miami comes in now for three-game set. Uh, did a little bit of selling. Not quite as much. Uh, Starling Marte looking fantastic in his new Oakland A's digs. Always been a, a big fan of his, by the way. And he's somebody who I've got my eye on in this upcoming free agency class with the Rockies are talking about buying guys and, and building things. He's somebody I keep kind of looking over at. And it helps that he hits like 478 at Coors Field, <laughs> which won't continue, but you just, you know, I see you, I see you Marte, but what do we think on this? Uh, we got a great, great pitching matchup set to start us off with Alcantara V Marquez. That should be absolutely fantastic uh, stuff there. So what are you looking forward to most? in this set well even game three on sunday that'll be kyle freeland's second start at home you've got the all-star trevor rogers scheduled to come back uh we'll we'll see what happens but that's a great left on left matchup uh and the marlins also have a lefty uh, another left on left matchup also on saturday is the guy that came over in that starling Marte deal the uh the marlins ended up paying down um, all of Marte's contract. And so they get a guy that was on a you know, top 100 prospect yeah. only a couple years ago, Jesus Lazardo, yeah. uh, Florida boy uh, from Marjorie Stone and Douglas, Douglas High School, uh, same school as Colton Welker, uh, Rocky's prospect. So uh, that was very, very shrewd move. So a really great matchup, sneaky good, sneaky good. Alcantara has been um, fantastic this, over his last couple starts. Um, and... Uh, he was a guy that came over in the Marcelo Zuna deal just a couple years ago. And at some point, the, the, the Marlins need to just kind of stand pat with who they got <laughs> and actually move forward because you can you only trade away guys so many times to, there to is try a... to get younger. But it's a great – it's a really fantastic matchup. Again, any right off the bat, anytime you've got 
those three guys going for the Rockies or throw John Gray in. That's fine too. Or yeah. throw Sensatella in. Doesn't matter. You already have you already have half of the conversation when Is you this? look look to see who's playing over a series yeah. or for a game. You look at the starting pitching matchup first, and already the Rockies have that half of the ledger looking good. Marlins, they're bringing they're bringing their top three guys as well. Yeah. It just occurred to me, is this the first time all year that the Rockies pitching staff has actually been at full strength? Because they didn't have Freeland for the first couple of months, right? He got hurt in spring training, so that takes out. Ben Gomber was out. Ben Gomber was out when Freeland came back. Gomber only recently came back, and since he's been back, Senzatella has been out, unless there was a brief moment in there that I missed. It may have been, yeah, one time through the rotation, but I want to say you're right. I want to say that you're right, because I feel like Chi-Chi has always had – Yeah. <laughs> I, I think there was a point in which maybe Chi-Chi, maybe even two points, was like skipped in the rotation because, you know, of off days. So they were – they right. didn't need the fifth starter, right? They, they didn't need his services, but they didn't have their, their top five guys. And right. Now they do, and it, it's just going to make for, for even more interesting matchups going forward. And yeah. I, I like it. I'm, I'm – I'm, very excited to see what happens this weekend. Rockies always uh, do fairly well against the Marlins historically. Take that for what it's worth. But I, I think they're going to continue to play great at 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 home. I think yeah. they're yeah. They uh, it, it's <laughs> I don't know, man. It's obviously a weird a weird place to be in because it's like how much does it matter? Do you want the better pick or whatever? I do. In the meantime enjoy just watching good baseball and and it has been weird like i said that that thing about up and down the lineup right now it's not that you feel confident everyone's going to be awesome right but i mean literally just look at the lineup they they're throwing out there regularly now tapia rogers which is already a lot more fun it's been even before that when it was tapia daza that was a whole lot of fun then you've got Blackman story usually in there in the middle. And while those guys, there's less dreaming on the future with them. No Rockies fan is like, ah, oh, man, Charlie Blackman or Trevor story is coming to the plate. Like you always want to watch those guys hit. They're phenomenal baseball players and have been for a while. And it's great to watch them. And then you start getting into the, you know, the Sam Hilliards and the Elias Diaz's and the Connor Joe's. And, uh, you know, yeah, these guys are, are, are more projects, but we want to know. We want to find out. Uh, and it's it's been a lot of fun as of late. And and we'll see where it continues to go and, and what will, you know, if they will try to. I, I heard Colton Welker, maybe they may still try to see a little September Colton Welker. And I'm I'm here for it. You know, but um, yeah, when the, it's it's truly bizarre, man, <laughs> when you're like, I'm almost more excited to watch the seven and eight hitter, not because I think they're going to do better than Tapia Rogers Blackman story, but because I want to see if they can, because I want to see if they can keep it going, because if they're pieces for the future, that's really cool for them, for everybody involved, even if they're role players for the future. The lineup isn't great in that capacity you go man this is the kind of lineup that you know maybe if things go right i think you can say that of course i think there's truth to that but it's that to your point it's it's a much more full lineup it's a more complete lineup where you're not once you get to the seventh hitter you're probably giving up outs or when you get to the eighth hitter you're like wow this guy's in there because he's really good at framing pitches and right. you know you're 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 thinking he's is he going to ever hit another double? I, I don't know. Uh, right. You don't have those questions anymore, right? Yeah. You, you're actually getting something. And those at-bats, are they mean a lot more. They're, they're worth a lot more as far as changing the outcome of the game because the starting pitching has been so good. Right. So, it's yeah, it you're, you're a lot more excited to see what happens. It's not, all right, well, looks like we're going to have to wait maybe an hour or 45 minutes or totally. you know, two more innings. Until you see Tapia and and Daza or B Rod and, and Trevor Story, now it's it's a little bit more full and complete, yeah. and more uh, hopeful, more wistful, I guess in a sense. Dude, first half of the season, if Tapia wasn't at the dish, it's like you know how when you're a kid and you watch baseball, you kind of almost only really watch your team hit. Like you watch your your team when they're pitching, but you're only kind of paying attention when you're young to like make sure that the other team doesn't score. 
right? When you get older, you start paying a little deeper attention to the pitching game and you would just watch your guys hit. And for the first two months of this season, I, I was like the opposite of that, where I like every, when the Rockies starting pitchers were out there, I'm like zoned, zoned in on the game or whatever. And then obviously, you know, I like to watch Tapia hit. And then these other guys would come up and you just be like, even like CJ Crone's good at bats early in the season. I'm like, great. He's going to draw a seven pitch walk. And I'm like, that's cool. Like, that's awesome. But for this team, like if the team was competitive, I'd be into it. But, you know, uh, it just hasn't been fun and exciting to watch the offense really until these last five, six weeks has it been compelling. Uh, They're not always great, but they're compelling finally. (laughs) And they're doing it on the road. And so that's, I think that's what, I think that's what ties a bow around it. runs on the last road trip. Blowing my mind. Actually a fun group. We'll see what happens. Stick with us through this weekend against the fish. We'll be here. Make sure you're following everyone on social media at Drew Creaseman, at Patrick D. Lyons, at DNVR underscore Rockies. You're subscribing to the DNVR.com for all that written content, discounts, free shirt, big beer, Discord channel, the cool factor. You get a DNVR tattoo, you get a free lifetime subscription. By the way, I don't know if thrown that out before. Which means a free lifetime DNVR up on your beer ski. That's right. It's almost worth it for that alone. We got trivia night down at the bar every Tuesday. I forget to plug that sometimes, and I shouldn't because it's so much fun. The first two had an absolute blast. Third one, I wasn't able to make it out to. Sounded like there wasn't quite as many people there, unfortunately. And that's on me. We Better got, opportunity. Sounds to me like it's a better opportunity, maybe. <laughs> I don't think that's going to continue to happen. There were some events, other events going on, but there we, yeah, get yeah. out to that trivia because it, it's all that's the other piece, too. It's not just general trivia, it's not Jeopardy, it's not right. just sports trivia, it's Denver sports trivia, right? Uh, they've bumped it up a little bit too because it's all Denver sports trivia. They did add a pop culture round, it's it's not as much. You got to know your sports, you can't win on pop culture alone. But it's nice to add that. I'm glad they did that. But, folks, and, and I haven't said this enough the, the prize if you win, if your team wins, $50 for the for the DMVR bar off, off of your tab. And if you haven't been to the bar before, like that's a meal and a couple of beers for you and your date, easy. Like that's. Good, and we got good food too. We got Wagyu beef burgers, all the stuff. So come on down, hang out with us at Trivia, hang out with the family. We appreciate you all. We hope you'll keep being the absolute best baseball fans in the world out there. We'll keep being absolutely Patrick Lyons and Drew Creaseman in here. And until next time, we will see you at the ballpark.